Hi there. To start our literacy lesson today, we're going to be looking at punctuation. Punctuation is very important for showing where sentences begin and end and for helping you to understand where you need, might need to pause in sentences or when something belongs to something else or what type of sentence it is. If it's a question or a statement or an exclamation, it's good to know and the punctuation helps us to do that. Now, I've written three sentences and I've missed the punctuation out. So I'd like you to see if you can work out what punctuation I should have put there that's missing and then we'll add it in together. Are you ready? Here's the first one. I would absolutely recommend visiting Mexico. Where is their missing punctuation? I would absolutely recommend visiting Mexico. Now there should be a capital letter at the beginning. Every sentence starts with a capital letter but the letter I by itself also always has a capital. So there's two reasons why that should always, why that should have a capital letter. What type of sentence is it? Exciting, regular, a question? It's just a regular statement sentence, isn't it? So a full stop should go at the end there. And there's one more thing missing. Did you spot it? There should be a capital M for Mexico because that is a proper noun. It's the name of the place. Let's look at sentence number two. It is sunny, hot and relaxing on the beach. It is sunny, hot and relaxing on the beach. So the very first thing to do is, of course, to correct the capital letter at the start. What should go at the end of the sentence? Is it a regular sentence? Is it a question? An exclamation? Again, it's just a regular statement sentence. So a full stop at the end would be sufficient. And I think there's one more thing missing. Did you spot it? It looks to me like there's a list of adjectives to say what it's like on the beach. We've got sunny, hot and relaxing. And how do we separate things in a list? Using a comma. It is sunny, hot and relaxing on the beach. So now that sentence is fixed. Let's do the final one together now. There's a variety of places to visit near Mexico City. There's a variety of places to visit near Mexico City. What should we do to fix it? Same as before, we have to check what the sentence should begin with, a capital T. So let's fix that. What kind of sentence is it? Is it a question, an exclamation or a regular statement sentence? Again, it's a regular statement sentence. So full stop goes at the end. Is there the name of something in this sentence? Yes, there is. The name of the place is Mexico City, which means that both Mexico and city both have to have capital letters. So we circle the capital M and the capital C that should go there. Now, there's just one more thing that's missing. There's a variety of places to visit near Mexico. One of those words needs to have a bit of punctuation in it. Have you spotted it? It's the first word, there's. There's is the two words there and is joined together. But there's a letter missing in between the E and the S, which means we have to put an apostrophe there to show that letter is missing. There is, there's a variety of places. Did you get all of those right? Well done if you did. Remember to include the correct punctuation when you're writing your own sentences as well. Now, for the main task today, we're going to be looking at using similes and alliteration. We talked briefly about similes last week, but we haven't talked about alliteration for quite a long time. So let's have a look at those two things in today's lesson. To be successful, we need to be able to explain what both similes and alliteration are, we need to be able to use some alliteration and similes in our sentences with the correct punctuation. I'd like to up-level your language choices and see if you can use descriptive language to improve your sentences. So we need to know, first of all, what a simile is and what alliteration is. So can you remember what a simile is? What is the job of a simile? A simile is a little bit like the word similar which means that it's comparing it, it's similar to something, it's like something. So when you're using a simile, it describes something using as or like comparing it to something else. Here's some examples. The lion is as loud as the children in 2RF. The fajitas are hot like chili peppers. The lion is being compared to the 2RF children. The fajitas are being compared to chili peppers. So as and like are used as ways of comparing something to something else. So there's a descriptive word like loud or hot and something it's being compared to as well. Now that's similes. 
but alliteration we haven't looked at for quite a long time. Can you remember what alliteration is? We looked at it when we did poetry back in the autumn term. Alliteration is where you use the same sound at the start of a word that you use on the next word. So for example, if you had the ch sound at the start of a word, you'd have to have ch at the start of another word to make it alliterative. So if you were describing chickens, you might say cheeky chickens because they both have a ch sound. It describes something using the same letters or the same sounds. E.g. Mexicans love spicy fiery fajitas. And I've just realised again, I made the same mistake as I made yesterday. I forgot. Mexicans is just a group of people. Doesn't need that apostrophe. So Mexicans love fiery fajitas. Fiery and fajitas both have the f sound. Chunky chicken tacos are the best. We've both got the ch sound at the start there. Now today for your task, I'd like you to see if you can have a go of filling in some missing gaps to create sentences which contain either alliteration or similes. So there'll be some sentences on DB Primary. Download those, have a read, and see if you can fill in the missing gaps with some words that will make either similes or alliteration. If you want an extension, if you find that too easy, which I know some of you will, then I'd like to have a go at creating your own sentences that could go in a diary entry about Mexico, either containing alliteration or similes, or if you really want to challenge yourself, both.